Good afternoon, Practical Magic. Michelle Lee here. Happy Witchy Wednesday. Welcome, welcome. I'm assuming I live. My circle is still spinning around. So I'm just assuming that you're all seeing me. When you jump on, say hello. Let me know where you're tuning in from. It is Witchy Wednesday and I'm here for a free training. I am inspired and sharing, inspired to share with you some of the major things that I have applied in my life and that I teach my clients to apply in their lives to truly create heaven on earth and master their reality. So when you hop on, say hello. If you're watching the replay, please put hashtag replay so I know where you're coming from and that you tuned in at some point it is witchy wednesday and it's an incredible amazing witchy wednesday the day after tomorrow megan and i will be headed up to sedona for our sedona retreat our embodied goddess retreat so that's amazing and so getting all of that ready to be taken up there and we've got an amazing curriculum to go through an incredible portal to the fifth dimension so super excited about that every day is witchy for us we are always tuning in we're always following the breadcrumbs and that's why i'm doing this training today because i am following the breadcrumbs and i want to support you in following the breadcrumbs as well now if you have been following me for any time at all you may know that i am about healing and transforming the past first. That is the number one thing you must do to become, to be ascended in your ascension process. You must um, acknowledge, feel, and release those denser emotions. And this is deep work that I've been doing with my clients for almost 20 years in really um, excavating the truth of who we are. I, I like to share that we are programmed for failure. That's the programming, but we are wired for success. And there's one thing that is so important to do, and I'm gonna share that with you. I'm gonna share that with you, exactly this one thing, and it really is a one thing. Um, but it's not always, it's not easy, and it's going to take an entire shift of your mindset and how you've been taught to think. Here's that one thing. That one thing is to, <clears throat> excuse me, give up the idea that your past should have been different. All right, you may have experienced abuse in your childhood, you may have experienced abusive relationships in your earlier adult years, and we can get stuck in thinking, I made the wrong decision, um, my childhood should have been different, my parents should have been different. What I want you to do is give up the idea that anything should have been different, that there was anything wrong with any of your past experiences. Now, what must be done first, what absolutely must be done first, is acknowledging the experience you had right like i said it, you must acknowledge those emotions know that if you didn't feel loved and accepted as a child you must go into that and really heal that you know i take my clients through eft tapping in really identifying how did i feel i felt unloved i decided i was unloved i took i read the behaviors and the actions and my parents reactions to mean that I am unlovable, that I am bad, that I am wrong. You must release that and move through that. Those emotions become stored in the body. And once you, begin, once you start to release those, you don't have to release them 100%. That's another piece that I see people really getting stuck in is being addicted to healing, being in process of healing. Healing doesn't have to be this long ass process at all, right? It can be 45 minutes where you really just dive deep and you tap through the stories that you've bought into. 
that you decided and we talk about really deciding right it's like oh when my mom did this or my dad did that or when the babysitter did that i decided that i must be bad that's a powerful piece because if you decided back then and you did if you decided back then you took into account everything that was happening and you came to the conclusion that i am bad right it's great that you decided you have the power of decision and now as an adult you have the power to make a new decision and that is so important and once you move through that process of releasing then you can move into the process and really begin to understand that your soul your soul wanted that childhood your soul wanted the experience of believing that you were unlovable, that you were unworthy. Your soul wanted that. So I want you to, to like settle into that for a moment. Your soul wanted to know what it felt like to be unwanted, to feel unlovable, because your soul came from wholeness. Your soul came from wholeness. A, a great example, I love this, is the book by Neil Donald, Donald Walsh called The Little Soul and the Sun. And the sun is God, right? The little soul and the sun. And the sun is our divine creator. And the little soul said, God, I want to experience forgiveness, right? And God said, well, that's very noble of you, little soul. But there's nothing to forgive. Everyone is loving. Everyone is perfect. Everyone is whole. And so eventually, Little Soul's best friend came forward and said, Little Soul, I am willing to forget who I am. And I am willing to do something so bad that it will, it will give you, I'm willing to do something that you can forgive. And so the little soul and the little soul's best friend are so happy. They've created this agreement that they can come to this playground known as Earth. And the little soul can have an experience of forgiveness, right? So that is the experience. You came here. We all came here from wholeness, from unconditional love, from fully and completely knowing our divinity knowing our divinity and we chose to have these experiences right megan and i have taught about what's your your soul's code right so my, my code we have many codes one of my codes is the divine feminine one of my codes is the divine feminine now my family of origin is um like many families of origin, right? Very misogynistic. So I grew up in this space where women were like a necessary evil. And so I grew up in the misogyny and I could feel that deeply, although I was too young to really put words to it. So I am, my code is the divine feminine. My codes are high priestess, the divine mother, and so, of course, I would choose an incarnation during which I would get to experience being the opposite of that. So it wasn't wrong. Yes, I've required healing. I've required releasing. I've required remembrance. And it, there are emotions come up around that where we feel victimized. And we move through that and we tap through it. And the goal is to get, be in a space of gratitude. Like, oh my gosh, all of these people, my mom, my dad, my uncles, my aunts, my cousins, my teachers, the community that I chose were all divine soul contracts. They were all good friends of mine who chose to come in and be the opposite of who they are right we are all divine holy individuals whole and perfect and to play a part 
of less than that is a huge gift to those that, to us, right? Like people who played all those parts that is less than they are is a gift. And it's, it could be seen as a sacrifice, right? Like they chose not to remember their divinity so that they could play that part in my life so I could experience the opposite of what I am. So there's that, there's the piece, like my childhood, that experience was never meant to be any different. It was um, never meant to be, nobody was meant to be any different than what they were. They weren't meant to play a different role than what they played. They played the exact role that I wanted them to. So that's the number one shift to begin shifting. You can't jump to the shifting. It's a process. It's a process of reclaiming your power, reclaiming your power from those relationships. And that first step, it's powerful three-step process that I take my clients through and that I'm going to be teaching in, um, I'm gonna go a little bit deeper into the process in my high priestess, my high priestess living free webinar that is happening next Wednesday. Next Wednesday, I will be teaching this process of reclaiming your power from those, from the past, from those relationships. We can replay, reclaim our power from money. We can reclaim our power from our sexual power, right? There's that three-step process where we acknowledge, oh my gosh, this is when I made that decision. Maybe you were four years old, maybe you were six years old or older, and I um, made a decision about myself that I'm unworthy of love or um, I'm bad, right? It, it, very much the four core wounds. We decide that I'm bad, that I'm unlovable and unacceptable, people will leave me, um, I am rejectable. Those are the four core wounds, right? And so when we look back, oh, at four years old, this happened and I made the decision that I am bad that I am unlovable, that who I am is unacceptable. And we started navigating that in order to survive, right? In order to get mom and dad's love and approval because our life actually depends on that. And so you recognize, oh my gosh, that's where I gave my power away when I made that decision about myself. And then there's the whole process of going through and doing the deep, deep EFT. You know, you know, I used to train my EFT process, Deeper EFT with Michelle Lee, because it goes, it's designed to go right to the core, right? So releasing those emotions of going, of course, when you're four years old and something occurred and you're like, oh, I'm bad, right? We tap through that. We release those emotions. And then we go into this process that I designed where you reclaim your power from that event, um, from the person, um, from the stories, from the story you made up and you call your power back to you. And in that, when you begin calling your power back to you, right, then you can really look at the event, the person, the story, whatever the story was and go, you can be in gratitude and appreciation. It's like, oh, no longer do you feel like a victim to that experience, right? And that's so important in becoming the master of your life and living the high priestess life, living um, the high priestess life that you were born to live, which is being a high priestess means, you know, alchemizing the emotions that come in. It's, it means, you know, activating the magic and and programming your own programming your hologram to create heaven on earth for you and those around you but you cannot be you it is a must that you are at least 51 percent in the knowledge and the wisdom that you were never victimized never victimized that every experience you had Every single experience you had was a decision that you made with the players in your life to play out these circumstances. 
And when you can come to peace with that, at least 51% of the time, it doesn't even have to be 100% of the time, then you are becoming an active and intentional um, creator and having impact on every circumstance, every relationship, every experience in your life. It, and that comes with really giving up the idea that your past should have been different. And there's a process in that and reclaiming your power. So I will be going more deeply into that on the free webinar and Tori's gonna pop that link in here where you can register for the free webinar. It's absolutely free, but you must register because we're sending out the email for the Zoom link. It's not going to be live in Facebook. It is going to be in a Zoom because it's going to be interactive. And I'm going to go deeper with you about how you truly become the master, the high priestess, the high priestess. I mean, that is, that is the divine truth of who you are and that is those are the breadcrumbs i have been following for 50 years right from the very beginning when i started seeking out the truth you know i was about seven years old when i asked my mom well what is true what who knows the truth about god because i was i was exposed to both to catholicism you know non-denominational christianity to fundamentalist christianity and i was like who's right who's true so at a very young age i was seeking the truth and i have followed the breadcrumbs and have found what so resonates with me and that is very much the divine feminine and the balance of the divine feminine and masculine within our hearts to be the master of our creation. So I would love to see you there um, on Wednesday, next Wednesday. I don't remember the date for that. September 15th, you can, you can register in the, at the link below. Invite your friends, invite your sisters, invite your girlfriends who are, you know, if they've been spiritual for some time and not always getting the results that they want, this truly is the way to get the results that you want. No more, you know, it's understanding the spiritual laws and understanding how to activate them and work with them efficiently and effectively in so many ways. So I hope to see you there um, Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. You can register below. There will be a recording so if you can't be live, um, you can get the recording, but I highly, highly, highly recommend that you move your calendar around and be there for the recording. Being live, um, being live, you know the energy of being live. You know that if you get the recording, you'll forget to watch it sometimes. You'll forget why you even wanted to watch it. It'll get buried in your email. If your email looks anything like mine, it'll get buried in your email and you will just forget why you were even interested. So, you know, clear your calendar. We'll go for about 90 minutes, maybe two hours. We're gonna go deep into high priestess living, what that is, what it looks like and how it benefits you and it's going to be amazing. I look forward to seeing you, seeing you there. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I'll get back to you or Tori will get back to you, but just register and you'll get all of the information, the Zoom link um, and everything you need to know in the email. All right, everyone, thank you for tuning in. Rebecca, so good to see you. So good to see you. All right, everyone, Mwah. bye for now.